Shahib Dar on the uh, line with me. He is the founder, chairman, and CEO of Energy Power Systems, located in Troy, Michigan. And uh, uh, Sahib is uh, Subhash. I'm sorry. Subhash. <laughs> Subhash. Yes. Subhash uh, has uh, been in the battery business for a long, long time. In fact, he was just telling me that uh, one of the first batteries he put in a vehicle was in the Chevrolet S10 back in 1993. So, boy, you look good for an old man. How are you doing? <laughs> um, I started young. <laughs> you started very young, I can tell. Well, that's great. Well, look, let's start off, first of all, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, your company there, Energy Power Systems. Well, uh, we, uh, we founded Energy Power Systems uh, last year, um, around this time, actually uh, August 7th is when we moved into this building that you can't see on camera right now. Uh, the uh, thought behind setting up the company was, uh, as you may know, or I will tell you during the course of this interview that I have been in the battery the world since 1982, actually, wow. uh, and um, uh, the co-inventor developer uh, with Stan Oshinsky and the rest of the team, uh, Pickle Metal Hydride uh, Technology, which we uh, 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 transformed into products and we put those products in um, Chevy S10 and uh, EV1 that you right. made. Um, and uh, after leaving the uh, energy conversion devices in 2003, I was involved in a uh, hybrid electric uh, powertrain for a Brazilian bus company. I also ran uh, NR1 and NRL for some time, which is a lithium ion battery company. And I uh, also ran uh, a, a startup company out on the West Coast uh, known as NBS Systems. So, then through this uh, cycle with nickel metal hydride and a couple of lithium ion battery technologies, and um, I realized that uh, hybrid electric vehicles or electric vehicles didn't quite um, take the shape that we were hoping, and uh, we were, we talked about back in mid-90s and late 90s, right. Right. and um, the single biggest uh, barrier uh, that is the reason for electric vehicles or even hybrid vehicles not being commercially um, uh, widespread and then achieve the kind of penetration in the marketplace that we have hoped for is cost. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our expectations were back in the days of uh, nickel metal hydride battery technology that uh, with volumes, the battery cost will come down uh, to a level where consumers could uh, afford to pay the, the marginal add-on cost to the vehicle and still get the benefit of uh, uh, high mileage uh, fuel amount. But what happened was with nickel metal hydride, the, the volumes went up slightly. Uh, the industry learned a lot about how to produce those batteries uh, efficiently and in good high yields. But in the meantime, the cost of the materials went up by a factor of three or four. Wow. So, as a result, the nickel metal hydride battery systems cost didn't really come down. Um, and then lithium ion industry, uh, which I was part of for quite some time, um, hasn't really achieved its cost targets that we set out for ourselves over the last 10 years. Um, we all hope that lithium ion batteries would come down in the range of $250 a kilowatt hour to really make it possible for uh, vehicle manufacturers to uh, make you know hundreds of thousands or millions of these type of vehicles and electric vehicles. Right. So I kind of thought about it and um, in my view, which is somewhat of a uh, devised view as opposed to what my views used to be 
right. to as well. In that there's there's been this um, thought and idea and, and kind of constant effort in the industry trying to focus on how many miles can you get between two charges? How far can you go on a single charge? Okay. And I think the focus has to shift from how far you can go on a single charge to how can you utilize electrons in conjunction with an internal combustion engine to improve the fuel economy of the power train, which is a fancy way of describing a hybrid vehicle. I'm sorry, uh, describing a what? Hybrid vehicle. A hybrid vehicle, right. Yeah. And we know that hybrid vehicles have been around since 1997. That's when the first Prius was introduced in Japan. Yeah. So again, the issue is cost. I mean, if the cost of the electric power portion of the hybrid system was, let's say, um, two thousand dollars as opposed to six or seven thousand dollars, we would see a lot more hybrid vehicles on the road today than we do. So I went back to, as somebody put it, I went back to the future and I said, well, uh, let's not start with materials which are expensive to begin with in the hope that uh, with time and volumes and uh, when those costs will come down. Let's start with elements that are inexpensive to begin with. Okay. And what is the cheapest element used in battery systems today? Lead. It's been in use for 150 years. Okay. And by far it was that lead acid battery chemistry that has been around for, for, for over 100 years. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it really got a fair share of the attention from the scientific and technological community to improvise its performance for a given application. So since the focus has been on energy, because that's what gives you number of miles per right. equivalent gallon of energy, right. uh, lead acid does not have energy, but uh, it does have inherently power capability. Okay, all right. And so, so I said, why don't we focus on the cost and focus on power? Because for hybridization, uh, whether it is micro hybrid or mild hybrid or full hybrid, power is more important than energy. And therefore, dollars per kilowatt is more critical than dollars per kilowatt hour. Because, right. for, because for all kinds of hybrid vehicles, you don't need a very large battery. Um, so how do you reduce the cost of electrification on board a vehicle? You either reduce the dollars per kilowatt hour, or you reduce the number of kilowatt hours on board a vehicle. Right. So if you reduce the number of kilowatt hours on a vehicle, by definition, that means it will have to be a hybrid vehicle. So, so this is the thought process. This was the idea. We came up with some uh, approaches how to take this old chemistry and apply the principles of material science that we have learned and we have developed as applied to other chemistries. Uh, nickel metal hydride for nickel metal battery. We said, let's take the principles of the material science, uh, whether it's nanomaterial science, or it's morphology, or microstructure, or other elements, and see if we can apply the, those principles into the metal acid chemistry, thereby enhancing the power without compromising its energy and without losing the single most attribute of lead acid chemistry that is cost. 
that is precisely the basis for uh, why we set up this company. So.